I saw a quote the other day that says, "There will come a time when you believe everything is finished. That will be the beginning." As I walked the halls of the hospital for my chemo introduction class, even in the zombie-like state my mind was in, I noticed my own passion hanging on the walls. Color, shapes, brightness, art lined the halls. So I am Dr. Diane Robinson. I'm a neuropsychologist by profession, but in my role here at the hospital, I'm head of integrative medicine. The integrative medicine department brings to patients lots of different types of interventions that can help them through the cancer journey, and the one that is most famous here uh, certainly is the arts and medicine program, where we actually bring art to patients while they're undergoing chemotherapy. We can't make any of our programs happen without philanthropy, and philanthropy comes in many forms. So Sam Flax is a wonderful local art company, um, art supplies, who have been around for many years, and they've been able to donate paints, brushes, canvases, to actually enable us to give this program to our patients. We have artists in residence, Angela and Watson, who will come two days a week and work on the chemotherapy floor. And literally, that is canvas and acrylic paints that she offers to patients. And even if they've never had any art experience before, she'll teach them how to paint. And it's an amazing process to watch. It's especially rewarding to me to be the resident artist here. Um, I was a patient here eight years ago, I'm a breast cancer survivor. So I know what it's like to be in the chair um, and to go through the anxiety and the, um, the unknown, facing the unknown every day. I think that when you're painting and you're focused on something other than yourself and it's a happy and enjoyable experience, it releases a lot of positive energy. Uh, art is, is healing on many levels. It's a, it's a place of positive intellectual intervention, a positive distraction. As you're painting, you're aware of things that are outside of your body rather than inside your body, so that you're, you're engaged in the art that you're working on, and it allows the body to heal itself and work back your health and just put yourself back together. There was a, I had a doctor actually up at the University of Florida recently who wrote a prescription for yoga. It was, he goes, yeah, that's the first time I've ever done that. Let's see if it works, and it worked. It's very interesting that now we can look at um, having interventions for pain management that aren't traditional. So it can be mindfulness meditation, it could be art therapy, it could be music therapy. And each of these now we know from the scientific literature has a positive impact on the person's well-being and the reduction of those medications and pain perception. My name is Amber Vasquez and I was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, um, April 7th, 2014. I'm in this group shuffling around the hospital in these halls and I see art, like really cool art and I'm just like, I don't care about whatever, like I don't care right now. All I care about is something that makes me happy, that I can, you know, there's a light. There's a light, and this hospital is filled with amazing, cool art. You know, I started chemo, and I realized that there was this lady, Angeline, that would come. So I started painting, and she would, you know, guide me, and of course, everything had to have glitter on it. <laughs> I'd bring my own stuff, and go to Sam Flax, and, you know, find stuff. You know, I mean, it made getting this awful treatment Amazing. I'm so excited to see that the arts and medicine program is really helping patients with their anxiety levels, their stress levels, treatment related symptoms, um, really reducing those things and we're actually seeing patients through art therapy and the arts and medicine program 
not need as much medication or not need um, medication to make them feel better or less in pain because they're distracted through painting on canvas. They get to also choose the medium um, and what they want to paint and we talk about their pets and we have a lot of people that paint pictures of their pets from their phones. Uh, they can choose landscapes and think about the beach or the mountains and um, they can take them to a, a place mentally that's very relaxing and very soothing and they often talk about good memories while they're painting so it's a very positive experience. Just walking into a room and and seeing a patient who doesn't look stressed at all and finding out that this is their very first treatment and they are have bags hanging from the IV poles and um, they're not even thinking about chemotherapy at all. Now they're looking forward to doing something. It's, um, it's something that they actually want to do. Sometimes they change their schedule so they can come on the day that the artists are there. Over a year and a half ago, I was an inpatient here at the hospital for 30 days at a time. When I picked up the brush, I never wanted to put it down. It took all the problems that I had go away for the day when, the, when I painted. It was amazing and it uh, saved my life, believe me. And uh, I'm still in treatment, but I don't miss my Thursday painting. Nothing could stop me. I, I, it's got to be a major factor in the healing of an individual, and if that's the case, it should really be uh, supported by the insurance companies. Um, they're paying for our health problems. Actually, we're paying them profits so they can give us back these health uh, assets with the, the medical groups they work with. And um, so I look forward to having an insurance policy someday where we do get things like that, uh, help like that. Community support is um, vital for this program and is really the lifeblood of the program because it's not fully reimbursed by health insurance. So really community support provides all of the necessary um, aspects of this program. Our program exists uh, mainly from the supplies that are donated to us from Sam Flax, who's been very generous in giving us our paints and our canvases, our brushes, everything we need to move forward with the program on a daily basis. Uh, we also have some funding from uh, Orlando Health Foundation and Baker Barrios Architects that keep the program up and running year to year. I mean, it made me happy. So, yeah, I think it's a huge deal. It helped me heal. It did. It took away the stress that I was going through. Uh, there was no pain in my mind. You know, it was just, when am I going to paint and enjoy the day? Anything that you can do and maybe it's writing poetry, maybe any of the arts that you are able to do when you're in a situation where you're in pain or you're suffering or you're fearful. Um, the fine arts allow that individual to get out of their body in, in, in a way that's called what's called a positive distraction. It's uh, engaging intellectually and spiritually and just moves you to another level so your body can in fact do all the work that it needs to do. It's great to be able to, to build the relationships and that positive energy with people coming to the hospital uh, for, for reasons other than for their health care. They're coming to paint and to have fun and, and to um, have that positive experience with the hospital. What has changed over the years is the emphasis and the focus on bringing things to people, interventions that are empirically supported. And sometimes it can be mindfulness and meditation, specifically to reduce anxiety and depression. And other times, are where we know the social interaction and the actual physical act of learning a new skill can be incredibly empowering. Self-affirmation theory is a psychological theory that focuses on how individuals adapt to information or experiences that are threatening to their self-concept. It contends that if individuals reflect on values that are personally relevant to them, they are less likely to experience distress and react defensively when confronted with information that contradicts or threatens their sense of self.